Hi everyone, Jason Hayes here, Product Manager for Trimble Realworks. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at how to use the inspection tools to help you evaluate the verticality and flatness of objects such as walls. So let's get started. Okay, so what I've got here is just a short scan of a small area of a building. Now I've already run auto classification on here, so the software's separated the walls and the floors and the ceiling. Now what I want to do is I just want to come over here and I'm just going to hide everything except for the walls. So now I can just see these walls here. And then let's say we want to do an inspection to check the verticality or plumbness of a specific wall. Now in this case, let's take a look at this one right here. Now what I want to do is I'm just going to turn on the station so I can see where the stations were in relation to the wall. And what some people like to do when they do modeling or inspection is they like to go through and just isolate a specific station. This is going to help to eliminate any problems that you may have from registration. That's not always required, not everybody does it, but just in case, this is how you do it. So I can see this is from station four. I'm just going to select the point cloud walls. Then I'm going to go to my edit tab. Then I'm going to come over here to the sampling tab. Once in the sampling tool, I'm going to choose the option of scan based sampling. I'm just going to click the light bulb up here at the top for the project and hide everything. And then I'm just going to turn on the light bulb for the station four. Then I just need to click create. Go ahead and close the tool. And then I can also come in and hide these station markers because I don't need those anymore. All right, next I'm just going to zoom in here and I'm just going to change my station color rendering to intensity based. This is going to help me identify the wall from the molding or any other objects that may be on the wall. I'm just going to select the point cloud and then I'm going to open the segmentation tool and I'm just going to fence right inside here, avoiding that molding around the wall. Okay, I'm just double clicking to end the fence and then I'm just going to click this green check mark or the I button on my keyboard to keep that area in. And there's a few more objects I'd like to remove. Looks like some sort of a room name tag and a, maybe a thermostat. So I'm just going to come over here, use my box selection, do that, click O for out, and do the same thing over here. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and click create, close the tool, and now I have this new cleaned up point cloud just of the wall. So you can see it's got a default name. I'm just going to name it. Uh, wall inspect okay that's good so i know what that is then i'm just going to make a copy of that i'm just going to use Control c and then you can also do paste now i've got this copy i'm going to take this copy now and if you have the modeling edition of trimble realworks you can go up to the modeling tab then choose cloud-based modeler and I'm choosing cloud-based model because I want to fit the model to the point cloud. So then I want to choose the, actually the segmentation tool is already open. If it wasn't, I could just choose it from over here. And then I'm just going to segment along the bottom here. Oops. Use the polygonal selection. I'm just going to go around here like this. Double click. Keep that in. Now I'm selecting along the bottom of the wall because that's where I'm going to fit this model because there it should be the best at the bottom. Then I'm going to use a constraint. Then I'm going to use the constraint to make parallel. And once this option comes up, I'm going to make it parallel to a direction. And that direction is going to be the Z axis. Now this is assuming that your scanner was a level when you did the scan or that you've used the auto leveling in RealWorks to try to level the scans up to the walls. Then I'm just going to click the green check mark to validate that space. Then I'm going to go ahead and click fit. Okay, so it looks like a good fit there. Then I'm just going to go ahead and click create, close that tool. Then I'm just going to select that plane, come up here to the plane bounding tool. I'm just going to move my mouse along here till I see this little kind of hourglass looking shape. And I'm just going to grab that and extrude this plane up to the top. And I might bump it over here on the side as well. Okay, move that over there. Okay, that looks good. Go ahead and click validate. All right, so now I've got a nice plane fit to the point cloud, but I actually only fit it to the bottom of the wall. And then I extruded it up to the top so that I can use it for comparison. 
Then I'm going to come over here and select my new plane. Then I'm going to use that point cloud that I named wall inspection. Selecting both objects. Then I'm going to come up here to the inspection tab and I'm going to open the surface to model inspection tool. Now you have to have at least two objects selected to open this tool. You can see if I just have one selected, it's still grayed out. So again, I wanna make sure I have both of these selected and I'm just going to open the tool. Okay, now what I'm going to do in this surface to model inspection is I'm going to compare this plane to the point cloud and I need to set a resolution. Now, I want to set this resolution small enough so that when I take measurements, they're going to be accurate. So if I had a resolution of half inch, none of my measurements are going to be any more accurate than half an inch. But I don't want the resolution set smaller than my point cloud spacing. So I'm just going to use the measurement tool up here and I'm just going to zoom in. Now this point spacing isn't going to be great. This was just a 30 second scan I think I did with the TX8. Pick these two points here. And so this spacing is about eight millimeters. Over here it's about six millimeters. Okay, so I know that I don't really want to go too much smaller than that. So this, if I go ahead and type in 0.25 IN for inches, you see it's going to be about 6.3 millimeters. So that works out. Then I'm just going to come down here to the step two and I'm going to click on preview. Now you'll see there's this fill holes option. I'm just going to turn that off for now. Click preview. So I've got a pretty good inspection map. Now there's different colors showing the differences between the plane and the point cloud. You see these black areas are where there's no points. So there's nothing to compare to. And you can see there's a few black areas up here. If I click on the fill holes and then do a preview, it's going to do some interpolation to try to fill those areas in. So it gives you a little bit nicer look. Now, as I look at this, I have a color bar over here on the right. So the darker colors are where it's going to be deviating the most. So the darker blue, you can see it's down here around four and a half millimeters. Up here at the dark red, it's about eight millimeters. And also as I move my mouse over the inspection map here, you can see the differences. So here we've got about a millimeter. And up here, you can see it's up to around two, four, um, depending on where I click. Now, another thing that you can do is you can come over here and change the color bar to be a cut or fill color bar. I find this a little bit more useful when I'm working with these kind of vertical surfaces. Now, it's either going to be red or blue. Darker blue is more it's deviating and the darker red is more it's deviating in the other direction. Where the color is almost white or a very light red or light blue, that's where the wall, the point cloud, is matching very closely to the plane. So again, as I move down here in this kind of blue area, you can see that it's about one, two, one to two millimeters. As I get over here in these really dark regions, you can get it. See, it's getting up to around four, six, somewhere is gonna be around eight millimeters. Okay, so then I'm just going to come over here and click on create. You can already see quite a bit going on with our point cloud. Just going to close the inspection map analyzer. Let's just hide all of these objects and then just turn on the plane and the wall inspection. So you can see down here, I can see the plane through the point cloud. That lets me know that the plane's closer to this side. Now up here at the top, I can see the point cloud a lot better than the plane. That mean, lets me know that the wall is leaning out toward me at the top because the point cloud is on this side of the plane. If I come back down here and turn on my inspection station, I'll just go ahead and hide my point cloud and my wall. I can see anywhere that it's red, that's where the wall is leaning toward me. Where it's a blue, that's where the wall is maybe a little bit the other side of the plane. And then again, where it's white, it's where it's matching very well. You can see down here where I took my sample, that's where it's fitting very well. Now, if I want to, I can open the inspection map analyzer by selecting the inspection map, then come up here to the inspection tab, click on inspection map analyzer and I can do some more analysis on here. One thing that's pretty useful is to use this points and polylines option. Then I can create a point or draw a line and I can pick which surface to put it on. By default, the software is going to use the model that I created as the reference. And then the point cloud is going to be the comparison. Now in this case, I just want to draw on the comparison because that's going to be the point cloud. That's the real life what's going on. Now I could come over here and create a point somewhere, or I could even draw a CAD line. So let's say we want to draw 
CAD line around this area here where we've got the kind of the worst deviations going on. Something kind of like this. Just double click to end the line and then just scroll down here. Click create. I'm just going to close the tool. Now as I look over here, I can see my inspection map there. If I hide the inspection map and just turn on the point cloud of the wall, make those pixels a little smaller. Now I can see the CAD line showing me right where the deformation is on there. And if I want to turn on the rest of the walls, you can see how it looks in relation to everything else. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now if I wanted to export that out, I could just come down here and select that point line, go to the home, and then export selection to send that polyline out as a CAD object. Now in addition, I can also select the, the inspection map, which you see right here. I can select the inspection map and come up here to the export and choose export inspection map. In that case, it's going to send it out as a GeoTIFF, which you can open in many CAD packages. So that's pretty much it. A quick and easy way to go through and evaluate the verticality or plumbness of objects such as walls. Now the tool can be used for anything. It doesn't have to be a vertical wall. You could even go through and evaluate the flatness of an object such as a floor. So the inspection tools in Trimble Realworks can be used for a lot of things. Today, we took a look at how to use them to analyze the verticality and flatness of objects. But I encourage you to try them out for yourself and find out what kind of creative solutions you can come up with to your point cloud questions. Thanks for watching.